and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're going to do a full furniture makeover. I'm going to go over all the products that I use and I'm going to show you how the piece comes into the shop, all of the things I have to do to make it beautiful again, and in this case, rescuing it from the dump because that's exactly where this one was headed. Before we get started, I want to take a quick moment of your time to talk to you about my membership group. Actually, I'm not going to stand here and talk to you for five minutes about it. I'm just going to list the benefits of my membership group and also down below the link where you can go check out more information about so it. So here's the piece that we're going to be working on today. Now, this is how pieces that I buy typically come into my shop. I do not buy anything that needs a lot of repair, nothing structural, very light cosmetic, but normally pretty dirty. The one thing I will recommend to you when you're buying pieces is make sure that the drawers slide really well and that they're clean inside. Those are two really key things that I check out before purchasing a piece. All right, so there are several first steps you're going to want to take, and the first one is to remove the hardware. After I removed the hardware, I did give this a quick wipe down, but not a really good clean. I'll go ahead and do my scuff sand with my sander here, and then I'll go ahead and give it a really good clean with my degreaser, deglosser, furniture prep. One of the things I wanted to show you is you have options. You can sand this or you can fill it with a wood filler. I'm going to choose to sand this. This is pretty beat up. It looks like it got pretty scratched and scraped up probably during a move. So I'm going to take my sander and I'm going to go over this whole piece again using it for scuff sanding but also using it to just sand that smooth. That will save me time with end product with wood filler. So what you're going to see me do now is scuff sand the entire piece. I'm using my orbital sander to do this. You can do it by hand, but I'm just showing you another way that you can scuff sand your piece. I'm using 150 grit sandpaper here, and I'm just giving it a light sand. I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I'm not trying to penetrate down to the bare wood. Just a light scuff sand. The main reason to scuff sand, adhesion. This will give your paint better grab onto your piece of furniture. This is what a scuff sand looks like. The paper I was using was 150 grit. I'm honestly not looking to sand down to bare wood. A couple of spots I did because I had little gouges in there and I wanted to sand them smooth rather than having to wood fill them. So a good scuff sand, this is what it's gonna look like. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and clean it up. Okay, our next step is to go ahead and clean this. Now that it's been all sanded, we're gonna clean it again. So normally what I do is I clean it before, just wiping it all down so that I don't sand anything into the surface. And then I clean it again with some of the crud cutter. So let's go ahead and get this piece all, all cleaned right, Another up. little tip is I'm gonna spray what these drawers in. Since they're a flush mount drawer, I can go ahead and do that. It's a space saver and a time saver. I will take them out and paint the interior of the frame, but the one thing that I wanna do before I do anything is to tape up the holes so I make sure I don't get any overspray on the inside, which is key if you're spraying. If you're brushing, this is an, not an absolute necessary. Here's our piece. The next step was I wanted to only spot prime this. I'm painting with the Lily Moon Opulent, which is a primer paint and top coat in one. So I didn't feel like I needed to prime the entire piece. Cleaned it well with a degreaser, deglosser, scuff sand it. I believe I'm not gonna have any adhesion issues and nor am I gonna have bleed through issues. However, I did sand a couple of spots down to the bare wood and when I do that, I like to go ahead and just spot prime. So that's what I did. You'll see a few spot prime areas on the piece. And now let's go ahead and get started. I'm using the Fuji Q4 spray system. It's a great spray system. I upgraded to this one about six months ago. And the only note that I have 
is the hose is very heavy. So if you order one of these, I would highly recommend ordering this extension hose here. It's really lightweight and honestly, it's about six feet and that's about as far as I Here even we are, get. coat one. As you can see, it's obviously very wet. No runs, no drips or anything like that. I'm about six to eight inches away from the piece when I'm spraying. And again, a reminder, not you're not trying to cover in one coat. As you can see, I have a ton of peek through there with that primer. That's okay. I'm going to pick it up on my second coat and then we're gonna be Here's good Here's the go. first coat all dried down. This is one of the sides here. This is just a gorgeous color. The coverage is amazing. And here around the front, it looks great. So second coat is gonna cover up all of that primer that you're seeing exposed still. So let's go ahead and get the second coat on. Here we are, two coats. This is the second day. I did go ahead last night, just close up shop, let it dry really well overnight and two coats, coverage is beautiful. I'm loving this color. Actually, I custom mixed this color. It's two colors. I'll list everything in the show notes, but I used the Lily Moon Opulent in Mystical Woods, and then I mixed in Black Lace because I didn't quite have enough, but it came out so gorgeous. So it's a greenish black. Now today we'll work on the top. We're gonna sand this down. I believe if everything goes well, we'll use the Lily Moon Gel Stains for the top. So we'll see how that goes. So this piece is a wood veneer. So I'm going to go in cautiously with my sandpaper to start and not aggressively. So I'm gonna start with 120 grit sandpaper and that is being overly cautious. However, I don't wanna burn through. My normal pattern, and I'll put it here, for solid wood, I typically start at 80 grit, go to 100, 120, 150, and sometimes I end with 180, no finer. Now, if it's wood veneer, I'll put what I use on this side, and I usually start with 100 or 120, go to 150, and end at 180. Because I can kinda tell, I already sanded a couple of spots on this, that it's a pretty thin wood veneer, I'm gonna go less aggressive and start with 120. for two reasons. One question that I get asked so often is, you just painted and now you're sanding. Aren't you concerned about that? No, I'm not. I would rather paint my piece first, sand second, so that I don't have to tape off anything that's been freshly done on the top in order to paint. Because I spray, that is an issue. Also, I wanted to show you, that's about the amount of sanding dust that I get with my sanding system. I'm using my Festool CT MIDI along with my Festool uh, sander. And so the combination really controls the dust. So literally I can blow this off or wipe it off with a microfiber cloth and the I'm done. The second reason I stopped is to show you this. I started discovering this as I was removing the finish. I've actually never seen this before in this funky squiggly pattern. This is a wood veneer top. This is not solid wood, but I've never seen that before. And so I kept sanding and sure enough, it starts again over at the next section. So very interesting, but what's gonna happen now is we can't use a stain because this is gonna come through. We're gonna see that through our sheer stain. Even if we build up coverage, you're still gonna see it. So. That's why I say we're going to try to gel stain it, but sometimes you have to be flexible and realize not every plan is going to work for every piece. So I'm going to finish sanding off this finish since I've gotten it started. So we're nice and even and smooth, and then we'll figure so out what to do. finish sanding it. This pattern, whatever it is, definitely keeps repeating and repeating throughout the entire piece. So stain is out. It's unfortunate because it's actually not a bad looking wood veneer. I really kind of like it, but... I think what I'm gonna do, because I need some opaqueness to the top to be able to cover that weird pattern, I think I'm gonna do a faux wood look with paint. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go grab all my colors and we'll ready get ready to go ahead and do the top. So I'm gonna show you the different colors that we're gonna use. 
and the technique that we're gonna use to do it. I am going with all paint. I decided that I could do the paint and then stain, but honestly, I did the other day a faux wood look using just paint and it came out so beautiful that I'm gonna repeat it here and show you the process. So let me show you the colors that we're gonna use. Here are use. the three colors that we're gonna to use to achieve this faux wood look. Now, you might notice they are all Lily Moon paint products, but this one is the mineral paint. These two are the all-in-one opulent. Now, I'm not going to be mixing these. I'm not pouring one paint into the other, and I don't recommend doing that as they are different formulas. However, layering or blending them is totally okay. Now, the key to a good blend is using your water mister bottle. I definitely don't do any blending without it, and I highly recommend you get one. This is like a hairdresser's water mister bottle. It puts out a very fine mist, so you won't get water droplets on your piece. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I may add this color into the mix. This is dark roast, and we might need to add a little dark or depth to it, but we'll see as we go along. I'm gonna put this in my cart just in case, and I also recommend starting with several brushes. And then for me, what I like to do is mist the piece first. That just lays down some of that water so that right off the bat, it's easy to blend. ahead and add in some of that dark roast. I just kind of splattered it on. Um, I, I turned the camera off so I could run over and get a thinner paintbrush to do so, but it just looks absolutely beautiful and I'm loving it. Now, look at that. You might wonder, oh my gosh, now what? And I don't mind touching up that edge. So normally what I'll go do right now is get a damp rag, wipe off the excess, and then I will go back and touch this up for a nice, beautiful, crisp, clean line. Now, you can tape off this edge. Um, I've done that also in the past, but the problem there is that you have a risk of pulling off some of that fresh paint that you just put on. So I just go and clean up and then paint over it with that darker The color. other thing you can do, which I find very handy, is to use the Mr. Clean little sponges. These work great for getting off this excess paint. Now this paint has a top coat in it. So I just will warn you that if you push too hard with something like this, you could have a tendency to remove some of the finish or the paint. Again, not super concerned because I am going to touch this up with that dark paint again. So watch how this takes it off. Now, I'm not applying a ton of pressure either, but let me just show you. Look how nicely that comes off. Now, I will go over this again with a rag and get off as much as possible. That's what it removed. Again, not putting a ton of pressure on there, just trying to wipe off that excess paint, but it works like a charm every time. So as you can see, it's pretty darn clean. Obviously, I need to go back in with my green and touch up like this area here. I'll do the entire band, all of the trim up here, but I just have found over the years, then I can get a really beautiful, nicely blended top. I don't have to worry about um, brush marks or I don't have to worry about start and stop marks. This way I can just do the top the way I want it done and I can go back and clean up my edge afterwards. Here we are, first coat. It's pretty much all dry. This little area still has to dry right there. But I couldn't wait to show you how beautiful that blend came out and it covered the weird squiggle marks which were right here and still shows through the wood grain and the best part i'm only doing one coat because this came out absolutely gorgeous and i'm super happy with the final finish there's some little spots that are still drying but i was super anxious and wanted to get on and show you i'm gonna wait for this to totally dry in about two hours i will go ahead and top thank coat you this. so much for watching and thank you for being subscribers if you aren't subscribed 
Make sure you go hit that subscription button as well as the post notification bell so you know when all of my latest videos are released. If you have any positive comments or questions, make sure you leave them down below as I love engaging with you and I'll always answer your questions. Thank you again and I'll catch you on the next video.